G'day folks, Troy Dean here and welcome to another episode of the WP Elevation Podcast and my feature guest this week from managed WooCommerce hosting at Liquid Web is Christy Chirinus. Hey Christy, how you doing? Hi Troy, I'm great. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for, thanks for joining us on the show. Now for those that don't know uh, about your journey and what you've been doing in the WordPress space, just give us the kind of too long didn't read version of what you've been doing over the last few years. Yeah, let's do the TLDR. So my name is Christy Chirinos. I uh, live here in lovely Washington, D.C. And I uh, got involved with WordPress about four years ago now. Uh, I met Josh Pollock, who uh, was one of the co-creators of Caldera Forms um, at an event and got plugged into the community and eventually started working with him on Caldera Forms back when Caldera Forms was at um, just under 30,000 active users um, to start setting product leadership and commercializing the product and making it into uh, the product that it is today. Um, Caldera Forms was acquired earlier this year um, by the parent company of Ninja Forms. Um, so it's been downloaded 2 million times, 200,000 active users every day. So fun stuff. And um, I've moved on to uh, go work at Liquid Web. Um, I'm working with the incredible team over there on the managed WooCommerce hosting product um, so that we can offer the first completely managed open source platform for WooCommerce, for e-commerce merchants to have full control over what they're doing. So I'm excited to be here and excited to uh, talk to the audience about what this work looks like. Awesome. Um, I have a question. How do you get to be a product manager? And what does a product manager actually do? And the reason I'm asking is because we are redesigning our org chart here at the moment and we have identified that we think we need a product manager or two, but we're not exactly sure what they do or where to find them. That is such a good question. And there are so many people that have that question. I think that product management is this like weird new type of career role that has propped up with the changes in how we work, right? And it's evolved from the field of project management, but when you're working on a product, the project never changes, right? It's the product. So you get product management and different projects across different teams that make up what the product's going to be. So the way that my job um, when I came on board, my boss is Chris Lemma, who's also very popular in the space, hmm. uh, explained it to me is my job is to be the customer's advocate within the company. Hmm. So I don't have any direct reports, but I work with every team within Liquid Web, the engineering team, the support team, the marketing team, the education team, the documentation team, the sales team, um, the rest of the product team to say what should be of the product. So how should people experience this? How should people hear about this? Uh, at what point should X, Y, and Z happen mm. and make those decisions and then coordinate the people, which is a lot of project management into a product manager position that moves around the product in the direction of the roadmap. A lot of companies have multiple product managers. Uh, I look at what we do not. We have one product manager per, per product. So I have uh, managed WooCommerce under my belt. Wow. Uh, a couple of questions. How do you know what are the success metrics of a product manager? So how do you turn up to a weekly meeting and know that you're doing a good job? And how does the rest of the team know that you're successful in your role? So that's such a good question. I have been loving talking about product management since this role started because so many people are curious about it because mm. it's a job that requires entrepreneurial skills. You're doing something different every day. And I think it's an amazing job to go into after being an entrepreneur. For me, um, it depends on the product stage, right? So a lot of product managers at companies will have their success measured by meeting deadlines, by updating the roadmap, by leading sprints. Uh, this is sort of like a more like agile methodology and things like that. And then you have other product managers at other companies whose success is more measured by uh, sales metrics, right? So are we reducing a uh, churn? Are we adding new logos and new names to the product every month at a certain rate? 
Uh, for me, uh, my job at Liquid Web is a combination of all of these things. Uh, my primary measure of success right now at this stage of the product, which is uh, earlier in the product life cycle, is uh, new customers. And as the product progresses and enters into a growth stage and a mature stage, those metrics start changing. We start looking at product managers being evaluated by the reduction by customer retention, mm. by reduction of churn, and eventually by uh, just pure customer retention, right? Do you follow any framework like we we use the pirate metrics here uh, in in house? Do you follow any kind of framework like that to sort of help you understand what you should be working on when? That's a huge part of product management. I think yeah. that something about my job is that there is always going to be more work than I can do in one day, and <laughs> a big part of my day. Uh, it's actually a time block in my calendar is to actually figure out what's the most important thing. Yeah. And those most important things are determined by the current goal set for me. So like I said, at this moment, that current goal is new customer subscriptions. That's going to change. Mm. That's the goal right now. But I know and I can see down the line that that's going to change and eventually become different metrics. So I sit down and I look at the outstanding tasks that I have. And I'm a big fan of like, I and how our matrix or prioritization, right? So figuring out what needs to get done tomorrow, what's urgent, but not necessarily related to that goal that's been given to me. And then what is and is not related to that goal that's been given to me and looking at that quadrant every single day and reviewing it to make sure that I'm making sure that I'm working on things that aren't on fire, yeah. but are important towards the progress towards the goal that I'm working on, but still making sure that the things that are on fire, but are maybe lower priority tasks or lower priority projects in the larger life cycle of the product are still getting taken care of. This is super fascinating because, I, you know, one of the challenges that I find as an entrepreneur, and I have this conversation almost on a daily basis with um, members and students of our programs, is it's really easy to just get stuck doing the urgent things and putting out the fires because there's some kind of instant gratification that you know that you've been useful today because you helped put out a fire or worked on something urgent. How do you pull yourself, what's the mindset around like, or, or even tactically, how do you pull yourself out of that and focus on the important stuff that might not be urgent and just let a couple of fires burn? So, that is that's a really good question okay we're like digging right into the meat we started oh, like please. 30 seconds ago <laughs> and we're just going right in yeah yeah so i remember um being in school so my formal education i um i did like a economics degree and then eventually i ended up going to business school hmm. um so i did my mba in 2015 and while i was doing it I was also working on this program for financial education for students. Um, before getting involved with WordPress, I worked at Bank of America, which is one of the big banks. Mm. Um, I worked on the retail side, um, but I got really interested in sort of student financial education and how students don't really know anything about managing their money. I don't know if parents don't teach it, schools don't teach it or what. I got sat down as a child and taught, this is how you write a check, right? Like here's how you have a budget. Um, but I guess most people don't. I would work at the bank and I mean, kids would come in with checks written in pencil and they would come in with like, I need to get $20 out of my account. Like, sir, your account is $72 overdrawn for the last three months. How do you live like this? You know? And, and I got really interested in that. So I was balancing business school with this sort of like side project that had become my main project because it was like a nonprofit entity and it was getting all this national attention. Mm. And I remember going to one of my mentors and just being like, I am so in over my head. I have way too many things to do and not enough time to do them. And there's just no way that I can do this. And he's like, Chrissy, are you working on things that are urgent or things that are important? I'm like, what? Those are the same. And he's like, no, they're not. Right? Like, and so he, so he introduces me to this idea of like the Eisenhower matrix, right? Which is like, some things are urgent. Some things are important. Some things are 
important but not urgent some things are urgent but not important some things are not important and not urgent mm. and the idea behind this thought is that you're supposed to look at every task with these two different dimensions because mm. some things are urgent and important some things are urgent but they're not that important mm -hmm. and so on and the way that you define that important dimension is what are, do you actually need to do to get to where you want to be? So for a lot of entrepreneurs, definitely this was true um, while I was running Caldera Forms. That's growth, right? And that makes sense for the product that I'm working on now, which is at an earlier sort of stage of the life cycle. We're about two years in on the release of managed WooCommerce, and it's the first platform of its kind in the market. So we're like at the cusp mm. and the beginning of it. So when it comes to that, the number one goal is to get people to understand what this is and sign up, right? As you move further down the line, the goals become different. Mm. When you're in business school and you're doing like a nonprofit educational program, it's really more about like, am I staying on top of my schoolwork? And how many people are showing up to the workshops that we're doing? What's the level of impact that we're having, right? So that shifted my mindset because I started to think about those two key things and then anything else, no matter how important it looked, if it wasn't about those two key things, it kind of went in the maybe urgent but not important box. And that can be a really uncomfortable feeling because most of the time, those urgent but not important tasks are things that other people asked you to do. So you get into this space where you're like, I'm going to let down everybody I know. Everyone's going to hate me. And that first moment is total panic and then these two things happen one you put them in the box and then the way that the system works right is like you're supposed to you don't go through each box at the time you kind of look at those urgent and important tasks first make sure that that box is empty and then you make sure that you spend a little bit of time each day on those not urgent but important tasks and you make sure that you manage the urgent tasks on in a timely manner basically right like sort of like manage that inventory um so two things happen the first thing that happens is that you don't pay as much attention to those fires because you know that they're not important. And then one day a week, you look at that list and you realize that those things that were on fire on Monday, <laughs> on Thursday, okay, yeah, they didn't even have to get done that much. I don't know. They forgot about it. Um, they solved it on their own. You, f you find that they kind of start resolving themselves. And you're like, oh, weird. I really thought that I had to put out all those fires and turns out like, you know, there wasn't that very much wood underneath them and they just kind of like fizzled out. But then the other thing that happens, and this is the part where I'm at now in my life, is you start saying no. Yes. Yes. These things come through and you look at it and you're like, okay, I'm going to have to sort this into it's important, is it urgent? And somebody asks you something, you're like, you know what? I don't think I have time for that this week. That's great. And That's you great. think that person is going to be like, how dare you say no? This is your job, right? And turns out they go, oh, yeah, no worries. I'm going to ask somebody else. No big deal. No, or, <laughs> or they say, oh, no rush. It doesn't need to get done this week. And it turns out this thing that looked like a fire isn't a fire. And it's, uh, it's kind of a game changer because yeah. it gets you out of constant crisis mode. Yeah, love yeah. it. Oh my God, that is like a masterclass right there in just personal productivity. A uh, couple of things I want to do in the show notes here. I want to link to the Eisenhower Matrix. I think, I think from memory, Stephen Covey talks about this in the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think that's where I first learned about the Eisenhower Matrix. Um, that sounds right. Yeah, so I'm going to put a link to the Eisenhower Matrix in the show notes. I'm also going to drop a link to the Pirate Metrics because I know I mentioned that before. Some people might not know what they are, um, but basically. It's, they're, they're sort of common uh, metrics that are measured in the growth hacking circle. So it's A-A-R-R-R. It's uh, acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, and referrals. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They're the, the pirate metrics. I'll drop a link to the explanation of that in the show notes as well. All right, this is, dude, this is just fascinating. Um, this is so, uh, I, I'm learning so much about product management. And, and what, what I... Um, what I'm hearing is that it must be a really challenging role because you need to get buy-in. You basically need other people in the organization to help you do your job, to be the customer advocate, right? 
it must be a constant challenge because you're putting your agenda in front of other people. How do you get them to treat what you need as urgent and important? So that has been a really interesting challenge, especially for me, because I'm transitioning from this role where with Caldera Forms, I called all the shots. Mm. What I said was urgent and important because I was in charge. Hmm. My boss now is Chris. And hmm. when Chris puts something in my desk, it's urgent and important because it came from Chris. <laughs> right? <laughs> like when it comes to my priorities, it's like customer growth or came from Chris. Hmm. Right? So... Now I'm in this space where I need to figure out how to put the priorities of managed WooCommerce, which is my number one, two, and three priority, at the very top of other people's priorities when they're looking at all the other Liquid Web products. And Liquid Web is a older hosting company mm. that has been around for something close to 15 years. And Liquid Web has all kinds of hosting. So managed WooCommerce is only the a small sliver of the Liquid Web family. There's managed WordPress, and then there are dedicated VPSs, cloud hosting, uh, Colo, everything, right? Um, so when I need something from, say, uh, sales or marketing, they are putting my request in a queue that is involved with all the other products as well. Mm. Um, so there's a couple of things, right? Um, one, I think that Liquid Web has done a really good job of creating a culture that is top down for customer success, right? So the um, the tagline of the company is the most helpful humans in hosting, mm -hmm. right? So the Slack, internal Slack has all of these emojis about like heroes and capes and things like that, right? To congratulate other people um, for helping a customer. There's a very strong internal culture of uh, celebrating people who went above and beyond for customers, right? And that reflects in the support perspective and the support approach that you get when you're a customer of the company. So having that culture saturated sort of sets a sort of important versus urgent matrix in everyone's mind. So it's easier for me to find buy-in for something when I can tangibly show everybody that we are doing what we need to do because a customer needs it. Right, so it's not for me, it's for the customer. And there has been a top-down culture created for me in which if I can identify a problem that a customer has, then everybody is already on board of the train of saying, well, our, our organizational urgent and important matrix is all about helping customers. So if we're helping customers, then that thing needs to go first. Mm. Right, and then the other things that are less important get down there. And that is a way that I need to make sure I frame the things that I need. And it also helps me organize my requests because quite honestly, like sometimes I need things that shouldn't be number one on somebody else's priorities list given that infrastructure. Got it. Um, so nice segue talking about customer success and talking about uh, helping the customer and serving the customer. Let's talk a little bit about the managed WooCommerce service offering. Who is the ideal perfect customer for the managed WooCommerce product? So we have three segments of customers that managed WooCommerce hosting serves. Right, That first segment is the smaller, you have a new store, you're looking at starting out, you have a store concept, you have a product that you sell, um, whatever it might be, and you're either already established or brand new and looking to break into online retail, right? Like you've had local retail, things like that. So a lot of the time when we have people like that, they are shopping around between like Shopify mm -hmm. and WooCommerce and they're familiar with those platforms and they're weighing the cost of standing something up. 
right? Mm -hmm. So for those people, we have a beginner plan and a basic plan that the beginner plan is like, you have nothing. This is a brand new concept. And you have heard that if you sign up with Shopify, it's going to be really easy now, but you're going to pay crazy transaction fees down the road. And you're going to not have that much flexibility. Your store is going to look like everybody else's store. So you start looking at other options and we want to give you a beginner $39 a month package to sign up for there. Um, we have a basic plan that then tailors to, you know, you'll see somebody that has a local boutique and they're looking at offering those products online so that people from beyond their town can buy them. Mm -hmm. um, that is usually somebody who's better suited for that because they already have traffic. They already have an expectation that some people will start coming to the site upon launch. So that's my first segment. The middle segment is this existing merchant. So somebody that's already been using WooCommerce, already been selling courses, uh, selling products, uh, selling digital downloads, using WooCommerce, and they need better hosting, right? So they're either with another host um, and the host may not be WooCommerce specific or they may be paying a variety of vendors, right? Like they may be paying hosting somewhere else and then a developer and a retainer to do a lot of the things that our managed support would do. Um, and they're looking to come over and consolidate things and also get the value of the bundle. So with managed WooCommerce, the goal is that it's an all-inclusive platform that helps the WooCommerce store grow. So when you sign up for one of these plans, if you sign up at my tiers for people in this particular segment, you're signing up for standard or above and you're getting Glue Analytics included, you're getting Jilt included, you're getting Affiliate WP included. All of these products are several hundred dollars a year, if not thousands of dollars a year on terms of glue and they all come included with the platform hmm. so that you can come on consolidate your costs increase your speed because we have a performance and optimizations migrations team that goes through all your plugins and makes sure that your store is loading in under three seconds hmm. and then you can launch with cart recovery you can uh, abandon cart recovery you can launch with those better analytics to start looking towards growth and then my third segment is those really, really big stores. So we have those super entrepreneurs that have hit the dream. They are making millions of dollars per month selling dog toys or something. And they have found the perfect niche and they're milking that niche and they need a high performance store for high growth, for high traffic. They need something that when they run a Black Friday sale and they run a ridiculous number of concurrent orders in about two hours, that the platform's going to be like, we got this. Hmm. And that's sort of the third segment for managed e-commerce hosting at Liquid Web. And those are the pro plus and enterprise plans. So how do you position, I imagine, you know, the, the, the Shopify argument is that and, and you're right that when you scale and when you get to a certain capacity that your transaction fees are going to be crippling and you're going to be leaving a lot of money on the table. But how do you position managed WooCommerce hosting up against Shopify? Because the, I mean, I've been a WordPress user since 2007 and, you know, built hundreds of websites and, and WooCommerce and trained thousands of consultants around the world. So I know WordPress like the back of my hand, but the truth is that the onboarding and the learning curve for, for something like WordPress and WooCommerce is very different to something like Shopify. How, what's the biggest challenge in getting people to come away from something like Shopify and make the investment in getting their head around learning the WooCommerce and the WordPress ecosystem? So I will be the first person to tell you that Shopify is an incredible platform. Mm. It's so easy. You sign up. They have made it foolproof. Mm. I've set up the wizard and you go through, you upload a product. It's so easy. It's like painful for mm. me, right? I'm yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah. my God, this is so beautiful. Uh, you know? yeah. And I would be a fool if I tried to say that that's not true, mm. right? So WooCommerce as a community has lagged behind that. That's mm. why Shopify has taken so much market share. Because when you're somebody who is passionate about handcrafted jewelry, when you're somebody who wants to do a sock of the month service where every sock that gets purchased, a sock gets donated to a local homeless shelter, you don't care about the platform. You care about getting it up and you care about getting it running and maintained without high ongoing expenses. Mm. And up until this point, WooCommerce has been losing 
getting there. Mm. The promise of the platform that Liquid Web has pioneered and pushed out is flipping that on its head, right? So right now, the way that managed WooCommerce hosting sign up works is you sign up, you buy the package, you create an account, and when you log into your Liquid Web managed portal, you have your store already created. You have your template files for your homepage, your shop, and your checkout already created. You have Astra theme already selected for you. You have your Stripe gateway already included. You have your Facebook advertising WooCommerce integration already included. You have Beaver Builder already on there so that you can start changing those pages. So when you log on, you're not going through that WordPress project that we talk about now where it's like, oh yeah, WordPress is so easy, five minute installation. Just put your name in, put your name in, and then here's a list of 15 plugins you need to upload <laughs> and you need to find this one from here, you need to buy this license, and then you need to get this tier of this license, and then you need to also download from the third party plugin maker's website these three add ons. Like we took out all of that. Mm. Right, by picking out the products that already work for WooCommerce. So you get this WordPress installation that's ready to go. So then what you have to do is you actually have to put in your assets, your contents, just like Shopify, and you can stand up a store that's ready to accept money in the same amount of time that you would with Shopify. So that onboarding is huge because that is what that segment number one that's what they're looking for, right? Like we want that fast movement. When it comes to the second segment, that second segment, if they're weighing against Shopify or they are on Shopify and they're getting killed by the transaction fees or they're looking at WooCommerce because it's a more extendable platform, right? They're looking at WooCommerce because they have ideas about a certain kind of search that they want their site to have or they want to collect a certain kind of data that's getting kind of locked up within Shopify, those are usually the pain points that we start seeing that get somebody who's successful on Shopify to say, well, maybe I'm getting a little bit too big for this platform, right? Um, oh my gosh, I'm making so much money and now I'm paying crazy amounts of transaction fees. Oh, I have a very integrated marketing plan for my store. I want to have an omni-channel communication solution that captures people from Facebook ads, captures people from mailing lists, captures people from this place and this place and that place and puts them all into one funnel. And I really want to have tons of control over that flow and that customer data and who gets contacted when and how. And WooCommerce as an open source platform starts to become a really great solution for those people, right? And so in that segment, my job is to make the costs of switching as low as possible. And that's really hard. Yeah, I'll bet. Um, because it's not just the cost of the software, it's the pain of disconnect. It's the pain of switching. It's like changing banks or changing accountants. It's like, well, I know I have to do it, but it's just going to be so disruptive to my business. Uh, so how are you solving that problem? What's the migration look like from a large Shopify store over to managed WooCommerce? So from a large Shopify store to managed WooCommerce, there's no dancing around it. You're rebuilding your store. Mm. And that's why a lot of our Shopify versus WooCommerce marketing, and this isn't just true for Liquid Web, this should also be true for the folks over Automatic who are doing WooCommerce uh, marketing, and for everybody and anybody who's offering WooCommerce services. Your pitch is, this is gonna hurt you down the road. Mm. Right, because that's what we're telling people. It's, you know, Shopify is an incredible platform. I, like I said, I will be the first person to tell you that Shopify is so easy and so incredible and so beautiful. But if you ever want to get off it down the road after you've grown an entire business on it, if you don't want to be susceptible to somebody raising the rent on you, it's going to be a huge pain, right? Like mm -hmm. we talk a lot about the elasticity of products and a lot of the elasticity of products has to do with how hard is it to switch. Some things are really easy to switch, right? Like if I don't like this brand of eggs anymore, I run out and then I go to the store and buy a different brand of eggs and nobody can make me keep consuming the same kind of eggs. Banks are a great example of something that's really hard to switch. 
if you want to move away from your bank, good luck, because at least in the United States, there's like a background check involved and you, they make it really hard to take out your money and then you have to go through your entire life and call every single person that you've ever opened up a subscription with and say hey i have brand new digits for this and so it just becomes this much larger thing and hosting and e-commerce platform is closer to banks than eggs yeah totally so <laughs> So when we talk about the cost of switching, when you're already a large Shopify store, it's they're large. And we're thinking about the long-term costs of growth. So we're looking at a store that is particularly magnetic in growth, right? Like they're just popping off. Um, they are selling salt slabs and those salt slabs are just going through the roof in popularity, right? Um, then the pitch that we want to make is how many months will it take for your transaction fees, savings, and the savings in these other add-ons and this cost savings in a vendor um, and service provider? Because there's, um, there's a question of it's usually more affordable to find a WordPress developer than a Shopify consultant. Um, at least for now. And um, will all of these cost savings over a certain number of months, given your current growth rate, pan out? And if the answer is yes, and that math works out and that calculator works, then it's a no brainer, right? You just have to put up the investment up front. And then it's a question of whether the business's cash flow provides for that or not. Got it. Um, the, talk, talk to me about the agency program because I know that when, when we were out in Santa Monica in June and Lindsay was out there uh, and, and Shesvi, we were talking about the partner program. Is there a partner program for managed WooCommerce at this stage? There absolutely is. So I will start by saying that that's not my department. That's Lindsay and Shazvi's. Uh -huh. But yeah, as the product manager, I work with them very closely. I work with everybody very closely. And Liquid is a pretty cool partner program. Um, the way that Liquid Web does it is that we have relationships with freelancers and agencies who want to leverage the managed WooCommerce platform and also manage WordPress and all the other hosting services that I mentioned that Liquid Web has um, for their clients. There's commission agreements and share agreements and I believe that there are tiers to the program where freelancers start getting more and more benefits uh, depending on how much business you're referring to Liquid Web. Um, there's also ways to set up the accounts so that you have a choice whether you're reselling and white labeling that hosting to your clients as a freelancer or an agency, or you're giving your clients the keys and you are becoming the technical contact or however it is that you want to structure that. So it's very flexible in terms of a partner program. And there is also a good amount, something that I work on a lot is the special partner perks. So we send partners unique coupon codes, um, particular discounts, uh, opportunities for education and more um, relationships and advertising um, for being a part of the partner program and actively bringing business to Liquid Web. Um, so it's pretty cool because it's kind of this, it's one of those like everybody wins kind of programs, right? Like you get more business, we get more business and everybody just amplifies each other. And some of our partners are really cool people. We go to WordCamps and we get to meet them and hang out with them and see how they're using things. Ever since my Caldera Forms Day, the thing that is the most fun for me about this work as a product person and as someone that's sort of always been on this end of the relationship is just seeing the infinite ways in which people can take the product that you're working on and make crazy stuff with it. And for me, that's really exciting. Yeah, totally. Um, I was on a call with one of our Mavericks this morning, Laurel, and she is considering, uh, Laurel, if you're watching, she's considering moving over to the Liquid Web uh, managed WooCommerce hosting. I know a bunch of our Mavericks Club members moved to Liquid Web as a result of our mastermind event in Santa Monica in June, which is awesome. Uh, and uh, yeah, look forward to, and, and they're loving it. So uh, hearing nothing but good things about all the managed services at Liquid Web. Uh, hey, this has been super fascinating and I want to thank you for your time and thank you for coming on the show where can people reach out and learn more about yourself and what you're doing there at liquid web yeah 
Um, I am all over. My name is Christy Chirinos. Uh, my website's christychirinos.com and you can find me there. Send me a message with the contact form. I'm pretty active on Twitter. Um, you can find me at XT Chirinos. It's X like, like how Christina Aguilera does X Tina. Mm -hmm. XT Chirinos. And um, you can also find me on liquidweb.com. I'm over there. Um, if you want to talk to me, you can tell the 24 7 live chat support that you want to talk to Christy and they'll pass it along. But I'm generally available and I really genuinely enjoy hearing from people. I'll be at WordCamp US in St. Louis um, in a couple of months. So if you find me in person, I'm the girl with the bangs. Awesome. And the liquid web shirt. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us on the show and I uh, look forward to keeping in touch and seeing how the managed WooCommerce service rolls out and, and how the product management goes over the next couple of years. Yeah, thank you. This has been really fun. Thanks, Christy. All right, gang, there you go. There's another episode of the WP Elevation podcast. Uh, reach out to Christy. I'm going to leave a bunch of links in the show notes so that you can access that and uh, click on those links and reach out to the guys at Liquid Web and see what they're doing. And also subscribe over at iTunes, wpelevation.com slash iTunes or Apple Podcasts, I think it's called now. Uh, and also get us on Facebook and YouTube. Look forward to speaking with you again next week on the show. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate. <laughs>